Hey guys, uh, Joe I'm here for Sanguine Lulu. I'm going to be soldering the FTDI chip today and testing it. So what you'll need is obviously the FTDI chip, the board, the USB port for testing, and soldering iron. The really fine tip on it. Smaller the better, I think. The most important thing I have found in needing this is flux. Got to have some flux. So that's what I'm going to do first. Take some of this flux here, put it on the pads. I'm applying it with a toothpick here because it's, you know, nice and fine and seems to do the job pretty well. The flux is going to uh, clean the pads as well as help the chip stay in place once we kind of get it lined up. So I'm done with that. Now, take and open the chip. Can. Make sure you have the little dot right there in the corner lined up with the dot on the board right there in the corner. And go ahead and place it. Find it helpful to uh, put it on the board kind of in position and then nudge it into place. It also helps if you look at the board from uh, this direction. You, know, you can actually see in between the, the legs of the pins a bit better. There we go. That side's pretty well lined out. We'll go ahead and look at the other side and yeah, I can use a little nudge this way. There we go. Check out the other side again. Looks good. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my soldering iron and I'm going to touch it to just the corner pad. Not the pin, but the pad. That's going to let the uh, solder flow up onto the uh, leg. And that should tack it into place there. Then, on the other side, opposite corner. Make sure that your alignment still, you can still move it a little bit after you've soldered one of the leg. There we go. Now it should be tacked down and you can start going uh, along each pin and soldering them one by one. I just kind of like to, whoops, I just like to uh, touch the pin with my iron just real quick. Enough to let uh, solder from the board flow up onto it. So I'm not using any extra solder here. There we go. Go ahead and inspect. Make sure that uh, you got no bridges there. Looks pretty good. Looks like a couple of pins right here and here could be hit just again. There we go. That's better. All right. Now we're going to solder the USB so we can test it. That one goes up here. This one's an easy solder. I like to uh, let it cool a little bit since there is plastic connected to the other sides of these pins. I want to be melting the plastic in the socket. There we go. I'm not soldering the shield yet. We can do that later. It doesn't really hurt anything to have it on. But we're done with the soldering part, so now what we're going to do is plug our board into USB and hope that rec Windows recognizes it. When I do this I like to have the device manager open so I can see what's happening there. So I'll go ahead and turn you up and look at that real quick. Uh, but you should be able to see a new device if it gets added. So we'll go ahead and plug it in. Uh, this way. And here Windows goes. 
installing, found the FTDI, found the USB serial port, and assigned it COM12. So now what we're going to do is load up PuTTY, uh, connect to our serial port, make sure that we select our COM11 there, or 12, whatever it was. Then to test this, let's go ahead and connect. It doesn't really matter what speed. Firstly, if we can connect, that's a good thing. No errors so far. But now what we're going to want to do is connect the RX and the TX on the USB TTL port together to do a loopback test. It's the uh, second and third pins from the bottom in this picture here. I usually take a short jumper cable and just stick it in the holes. Hold it with my thumb there. I don't know if you can see that or not. There. Once that's in, hold it together. Now try to type something. If you can see something responding, you know your FTDI chip is working correctly. Notice no wire type and nothing comes back. And that's it.